Welcome to the Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, episode 256. I'm your host, Kim Newlove. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Today, I'm going to be providing an encore presentation of a speech that I gave to some students at the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy in an elective that is called Exploring Novel Careers in Pharmacy. I delivered this speech in November of 2023. As I record this, it is December 14th, about a month later. Dr. Michelle Schroeder is the instructor for the class. She invited me to participate via WebEx. There were 27 students in this elective called Exploring Careers, Novel Careers in Pharmacy at the University of Toledo. I gave a presentation. I was invited to spend 35 minutes on my presentation via PowerPoint or similar. I use Canva. And I probably spent about 27 minutes delivering this message. Hopefully it'll be a little bit less than that today, but we will see. Afterwards, I was invited to ask the students to ask questions. During this podcast episode, I will be sharing a couple of the questions that students asked that were really memorable, two questions. I'll do that after I do the presentation. I'm trying to think of any other background information I should give you. All the students had great questions. I was invited to share my past, present, future, and any advice. And at this time, what I'm going to do is share the introduction that I provided to Dr. Schroeder, because you may not know me. This may be the first time you're watching my podcast or listening to my podcast. Therefore, I will dive into the presentation after I read this introduction. Kim Newlove is an Ohio pharmacist. She graduated from the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy with her BS Farm in 2001. Her clinical experience includes hospital, retail, compounding, and behavioral health. Kim is no longer in clinical practice. Instead, she is employed in two non-traditional roles. First, Kim is a full-time independent caregiver through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities, also known as DODD. With that role, Kim provides care directly to an adult with a developmental disability in Wood County, Ohio. She has an NPI number and a Medicaid billing number, Ohio Medicaid billing number. Second, Kim is a voice actor and a podcast host. She founded the Pharmacist Voice LLC in 2017 and launched the Pharmacist Voice podcast in 2019. Her website is thepharmacistvoice.com. That's also, by the way, where you can find the show notes for this episode. Kim is also the host of the Perrysburg podcast, which you can find at perrysburgpodcast.com. Kim is a go-to pharmacist in audio production. She believes in the transformative power of well-communicated messages, and her mission is to connect with her audience so that they trust her message. Her delivery style is confident and trustworthy. In her spare time, Kim enjoys spending time with family and friends, playing Ticket to Ride Switzerland, swimming, and riding her BMW C400X motorbike. That is so true. All right, at this time, let's switch over to the presentation, which I made again using Canva. At this time, you should be looking at the presentation if you're in the YouTube version. If not, I will try to make this audio friendly if you're just listening to the podcast. I had a title slide with a clickable QR code if anyone wanted to find my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. All right, let's get started. You may already be familiar with the work that I do at The Pharmacist Voice. Have you ever heard a commercial on the radio or television? Have you ever listened to a podcast? Have you ever listened to an audiobook? Have you ever watched a YouTube video? How about e-learning? Have you ever learned online using a computer? How about a conference? Have you ever been to a conference where there's someone introducing the speakers? Well, if you've heard any of these things, you're familiar with the type of work that I do at The Pharmacist Voice. Now, as I go through this presentation, you're going to hear me ask questions. These are the questions that the instructor, Dr. Michelle Schroeder, provided to me, and I went ahead and used them as my guide during the presentation. What are your current responsibilities? I have responsibilities as a pharmacist, as a voice actor, and as a podcast host. 
as a pharmacist, I do not work in clinical practice. I don't work in pharmacies anymore. Therefore, my only responsibility is to keep my license in good standing. So all I have to do is keep maintain my license. As a voice actor, it depends on the job. My responsibilities are different depending on which gig I accept. And just to give you an idea of the types of things that I do, I'm a medical narrator, I'm a podcaster, I create online courses, I am a consultant, I do e-learning, narration for e-learning, I do ex narration for explainer videos, and I narrate audiobooks. There are a lot of different responsibilities depending on the job. Overall, my mission is to connect with my audience so that they trust my message, no matter what I'm doing. That is my chief responsibility. I narrate projects for clients. I have to show up prepared. I have to definitely practice ahead of time. Overall, I would say that the product I actually deliver is called an MP3 file. So I deliver MP3 files to my clients on time and I meet specifications. I show up to gigs prepared and on time. I also create self-paced online courses that get sold and I have to create something that matches usually the visual on the screen with my voice. Videographers are great to work with, but when I create my own, I'm doing it all myself. I also have to answer questions for clients. Clients are various. Audiobook clients, if somebody needs a podcast intro, it just depends. But I also do consulting. Now, some of the consulting that I do, we'll get to this in a little bit, is I help pharmacist authors narrate their own audiobooks. Answering questions is a huge responsibility, definitely on the list, but I would say, depending on the gig, my responsibilities overall as a voice actor vary greatly. What are my responsibilities as a podcast host? The list, I think, is very long. I have to publish episodes on a regular schedule. At this time, it's every single Friday. I have two podcasts. It can be a challenge to get those out, but that's one of my responsibilities. I have to schedule my guests and communicate with them. I have to do research about guests or topics that I'm talking about. I create outlines that I can follow as I'm recording podcasts. I write questions for the guests that I end up interviewing. I also record, edit, and produce all of my, my solo shows and my interview shows. I have a lot of editing to do. Not that I make a lot of mistakes, but to cut off the junk at the beginning, the junk at the end, and any oopsies and, or sidebar conversations in the middle takes time. One of my other responsibilities is creating episode artwork for podcasts. I also write episode titles, descriptions, and show notes. There's a lot of writing involved with podcasting, if you can actually believe that. Another responsibility is advertising episodes. And finally, one of my favorite things to do is building relationships as a podcaster, relationships with you, my audience, but also relationships with my guests and anybody who ends up being a future client. Sometimes someone will hear me on a podcast episode and decide, hey, I want to work with her because of that podcast episode. I have more than 250 episodes at this point in time. At the time that I delivered this speech to the students in November of 2023, I had 251 episodes. I put the most recent 10 episodes on a slide to show them. But I also have series that I run. It's not always just solo shows with me talking and interview shows with the guests. Sometimes I am talking before I have the guest come in and talking after them. I get to talk in every single episode. It's a lot of work. So one of my responsibilities is making all of the magic happen. <laughs> How about information about the organization you work for? That was a question. Basically, all I'm going to say is that my company, I founded my company, The Pharmacist's Voice, in 2017. I founded my podcast, The Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, in 2019, and then the 
Perrysburg podcast, my second podcast, kind of a hobby podcast, I started in 2023. My business, The Pharmacist's Voice, has a registered trademark. That means that I can put an R with a circle around it after the name of my company because I registered it with the U.S. Patent and Trade Office, Trademark Office, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. If you are watching the YouTube video of this episode, you will notice that there's a lot of photography, branded photography in a lot of my stuff that I do, podcast episodes, website, et cetera. And there's a method to that. I would like to control the narrative that goes out into the world about me. I like to create professional looking uh, artwork for my podcast episodes. And in order to do that, if I want to put my picture on it, I need to have professional looking photos of myself. Therefore, I go to Vanity Studios. They used to be in Perrysburg, Ohio, which is where I live. Now they're located in Maumee, Ohio, and they do all of my branding photography. They take pictures of me, which then I can put into podcast episodes on my website, share with people who interview me and so forth. I just wanted to stick that in kind of towards the beginning of the presentation because you're going, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of pictures of me. What is a typical day or week like for you? Well, a day in the life of Kim involves family first, family first, self-care second, business third. How I spend my time, eight to 10 hours a day I spend as a caregiver for my son, Craig. That part that you heard about in the introduction, me being an independent caregiver through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities, I am my son's caregiver. He has autism and he's quite low functioning. He needs a lot of help. And I am not able to work in traditional clinical practice because I need to be his caregiver. I found a way to get paid to be his caregiver because there's a nationwide shortage. So that's why at the top of this slide, it says eight to 10 hours a day I spend being my son's caregiver. Uh, that's seven days a week. It never stops. <laughs> he doesn't take the weekends off and neither do I. One to two hours a day, at least five days a week, I spend on self-care. That includes going to the gym or walking, doing some sort of exercise, doing something just for me and also showering. <laughs> I also spend about three hours a day doing projects for my family. I won't bore you with the details. It's the usual stuff, beds, dishes, laundry, dinner prep, errands, appointments, projects, communications, you know, phone calls, emails, texts, etc. Three hours a day, I'm doing projects for my family, usually while my son Craig is out of the house at school. Now, three hours a day I spend on my business about five days a week. That's only a 15-hour work week. You have to keep in mind, I have this as kind of a side hustle. Being a caregiver is my main hustle. I would love to make this, the pharmacist's voice, my main hustle, but that's not where I'm at in life. If I only get 15 hours a week to work on my business, how do I spend that 15 hours? I would say about three hours a week are spent on podcasting. That may include building relationships with guests, booking guests, communicating with guests, recording podcast interviews, recording solo interviews, creating artwork, writing outlines, writing show notes, etc. Three hours a week is about right. Three hours a week I spend sharpening my skills or working on the business. What does that mean? reading scripts, taking classes. It could mean a number of things. Sometimes I'm updating my software that I use for podcasting. I, I would say I set aside three hours a week to sharpen my skills. Now that only leaves about nine hours a week for auditioning and working on paid audio projects. I don't make $100,000 a year like a pharmacist does. I make significantly less because I only work about really nine hours a week on auditioning, doing actual projects, and also I have to build relationships. Part of what I do is I have to communicate with whoever casts the voice talent because that's me. <laughs> I have to promote myself, advertise myself. Nobody just brings projects to me, <clears throat> excuse me, 
unfortunately, nobody just brings projects to me. I don't have a manager or an agent at this time. I have to go out and find work. Sometimes people find me online and the projects come to me, but I would say 80% of the time I'm making it rain myself. How long have you been in your position? I have been a pharmacist for 22 years. I have been a voice actor for eight years, and I have been a podcast host for four years. What's your academic or professional background? I went to the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy. I graduated with my BS Pharm in 2001. I only have the BSP, the Bachelor of Science degree in pharmacy. I am not a PharmD. I ended up having kids very young, age 23. I got pregnant with the first kiddo, new mom at 24. Second kiddo, got pregnant at 25, had kid number two at 26. Craig is the first child. Derek is the second. And once we found out my son had a disability, my plans to go to grad school got canceled. So I just have the BSP, but you can do a lot with just a Bachelor of Science degree in pharmacy. As a student, I had lots of great experiences. I started off with a pharmacy technician role with Rite Aid back in 1997. I worked that for eight months. Then in later in 1997, I started working at Toledo Hospital as an intern. I worked there for three years, and then I worked for Walgreens during my, I don't know if it was externship or clerkship rotation, all you needed were two eight-week rotations to graduate from pharmacy school with your BSP back in the day. So I worked for Walgreens for eight weeks and the Federal Bureau of Prisons for eight weeks as well. That was back in 2001. Let's move on to my pharmacist experiences. I worked in hospital pharmacy for one year. Then I worked for a retail pharmacy, Walgreens, for nine years. This was in the Toledo, Ohio area. While I worked for Walgreens, I also worked for a compounding pharmacy. The compounding pharmacy made respiratory solutions for inhalation. It was a cool job. I liked compounding very much. And then finally, I worked at a behavioral health hospital for one year. Now, I've been a pharmacist for 22 years. All those numbers do not add up to 22. I have not always worked. When I was having my children, I worked part-time and I worked my way to not at all. There were years when I didn't even work at all in pharmacy. Right now, I don't work as a pharmacist, but those are my pharmacist experiences. Moving on to voiceover industry training. I have had a lot of training as a voice actor. Now, when you say voice actor, it's not an actor, you know, like it's a stage actor. This is how to use your voice to gain someone's trust to communicate a message. This is a lot like public speaking training, except there's audio engineering involved and there's a director. You don't get to make a lot of the choices. Somebody tells you what to do. I learned about voiceover at first from Nancy Wolfson. She is a voiceover coach. Then I went to David Rosenthal. Debbie Irwin, and I've had some others here and there as well. I went through audiobook narration training, which was so fun. That was with a man named Sean Pratt. He teaches nonfiction non audiobook narration. I also learned audio engineering from various sources, but primarily on a program called Studio One Artist. And that software is kind of hard to learn. I needed a mentor. My mentor's name was Don Barnes. I'm still in touch with him. I swear he's still helping me out years later. <laughs> I also had some training. You're never going to believe this, but through improv, improv comedy at Glass City Improv. Improv kind of helps get you out of your shell, thinking on your feet, able to do public speaking a lot more comfortably. If you have the opportunity to take an improv class, do it. It is fun. Other training that I've had, podcasting training, definitely. I know how to record, edit, and produce audio. I knew how to do that before I came to podcasting, but I didn't understand all the nuances of the artwork and writing a description, show notes, uploading things to a media host, all the things. My podcasting training came from Dave Jackson at the School of Podcasting. Dave Jackson is a fantastic 
fantastic teacher. He breaks things down into bite-sized chunks just the way I like to learn, and I just love him. I am still a student of his because I feel like I still need a coach and a mentor, and he's the one for me. If you want to learn more about podcasting, go to schoolofpodcasting.com. And I was very lucky that I got to interview him on my podcast, episode 79. And I also got to meet him in Akron, Ohio. We both live in Ohio. I'm on the west side. He's on the east side. But I got to drive out to Akron, Ohio and meet him this August, August 2023, at a podcasters meetup called the Northeastern Ohio Podcasters Meetup. Very fun. Good guy and very tall. <laughs> I'm very short. I'm like five, three and a half. He's got to be over six foot. How did you find your current job? That was a question for me. The answer is I created it. I'm an entrepreneur. That's how I found my job. A lot of people have to interview for their jobs. I just had something I was passionate about and I launched a company so that I could do it. How do I get gigs? Even though I didn't have to interview to create my company, I still have to meet people so that they'll hire me, right? I go to conferences, I meet people, and for example, that's how I met my two audiobook clients. I also get referrals from other people, word of mouth, you know. I also do direct marketing where I contact someone directly via email, phone, or direct message on social media apps. LinkedIn's my favorite. I also get gigs through my podcast. People find me, they hear me, they want to work with me, and people find me online. I find people online. People also find me online. My website, LinkedIn, YouTube, social media, you name it. Some examples of some voice actor gigs that I have done. I have narrated audiobooks. Two examples are on the screen. One is Perimenopause, the Savvy Sister's Guide to Hormone Harmony by Dr. Anna Garrett. The other one is Impact Pharmacist, Start Your Own Wellness Practice and Leave Your Retail Pharmacy Job Behind by Dr. Asha Pai Bohannon and her husband, Eric Bohannon. Now, also in the audiobook category, I help pharmacist authors who want to narrate their own audiobooks. That's a consulting type job. Two examples have been Dr. Salam Kabani. She's a pharmacist. She wrote COVID Long Hauler, My Life Since COVID. I had the opportunity to interview her back in the spring. The episode is episode 221 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast, if you want to check that out. And also, I helped Corey Jenks. Dr. Corey Jenks, who's also a pharmacist, he wrote Permission to Care building a healthcare culture that thrives in chaos. And I just helped coach him a little bit and he narrated his own audiobook. Salam narrated hers, Corey narrated his, and Corey, I got to interview about his book in episode 230 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. You can check both of those out. Episodes 221 is Salam and 230 is Corey. How about voice actor gigs with e-learning? I am not allowed to share proprietary content from other people on my podcast or on YouTube. Therefore, I won't be doing that, but I can do and have done e-learning for others. And some examples of what I have done for myself are my two online courses. One is called A Behind the Scenes Look at the Pharmacist's Voice Podcast, and the other is called Pronounce Drug Names Like a Pro a resource for healthcare professionals, students, and others. You can find both of those at kimnewlove.com, kimnewlove.com. Let's move on to voice actor gigs that I have done in the live announce category. There's just two examples at this point. I have moderated the Clinical Olympics. Basically, I go in, I open it up, and I close it at the end, but in the middle, I introduce the speakers. These are somewhat famous doctors. For example, at ID Week in Washington, D.C., there were, of course, infectious disease doctors, and they were talking about a very important topic. I introduced them one by one. They give their spiel for 10, 15 minutes. And then I also ran the active learning piece where there were questions and answers. 
I would ask the questions, the answers were on an iPad, and the continuing medical education company that hired me would collect that information. I don't know what they used it for, but there were iPads that the respondents responded on, and I'm sure something was done with that information. But they do all this work. They create these amazing events. They're very well done. And then they put little of me out front to run it, which I still think is amazing. I appreciate their confidence in me. And I think I did a good job. If you're looking at the YouTube video, you'll also see a picture of me at the American Society of Hematology Conference in New Orleans, Louisiana. That was a year ago in December of 2022. I'd be happy to do more live announce gigs. I just haven't had any this year. Voice actor gigs, there's other things that I do narration-wise. I already mentioned it kind of towards the beginning of the presentation, medical narration, e-learning, explainer videos, and podcast intros and outros. If I weren't in this job, what would I like to do? That's the next question. In episode 22 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast, more than three years ago, I talked about the funnel that I used to kind of funnel my ideas down to just one, which was voice acting and then later on being a podcast host. I had a lot of ideas of things that I wanted to do. For example, being a prevention specialist at a school, a high school, helping with drug abuse prevention education. I was interested in being an injury prevention specialist. I was interested in being a specialist in poison information. I was interested in doing MTMs in homes of patients. I had to funnel all those ideas down by thinking them through. Do I have time for this? Do I have the childcare support that I need? Will this pay enough to meet my goals, my income goals? There's a lot that one needs to think about. <laughs> but at this time, my ambitions have changed a little bit. So if I were not doing what I'm doing now, the question is, if you weren't doing this job, what would you like to do? The answer is, I would be a medical writer or a pharmacogenomics pharmacist, or I would run a specialty pharmacy. Urology interests me at this time, and I still love the idea of being a specialist in poison information. Poisoning prevention just speaks to me. There's something about, wasn't it Snow White and the poison apple and, you know, the true love's kiss at the end, the poison and antidote theme? I just love. So I'd still be interested in working for the Poison Centers of America. Moving on, this is a little bit of advice from me to you as a pharmacy student. You need to find your icky guy or icky guy. Not really sure how to pronounce it. My apologies if anybody listening speaks Japanese. Apparently, this is a Japanese word. But your icky guy is what you love to do, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, what you're good at, and what you value. There's a, such a thing as a Venn diagram where a bunch of circles kind of converge. It's at that spot where all of the circles converge that you'll find this, this job that you want to do, your reason for wanting to do that job. As a pharmacy student, I would recommend that you do some soul searching and figure out what you love to do, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, what you're good at, and what you value. And when it comes to what you value, think, do you like working Monday through Friday, nine to five, no weekends, no holidays, things like that, being home for dinners with your family? There's a lot more to life than just making money. Okay, next question is, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? I'll just cut to the chase, pretty much doing the same thing that I'm doing now, not working as a pharmacist, still being married, having my kids, being a pharmacist only in name, and also being a voice actor and a podcast host. In five years, I'm 45. In five years, I will be 50. I will have been married for 27 years. My kids will be 25 and 23 years old. My license will be 27 year, years old. I will have been a pharmacist for 27 years. I will have been a voice actor for 11 years. I will have been podcasting for nine years. And I definitely want to still be working at the age of 50. My 10-year plan, very similar. Also not working as a pharmacist, but I will have been licensed for 32 years, still want to be a voice actor, 
I will have been a voice actor for 16 years at that point. Wow, that's amazing to think of. I will have been podcasting for 14 years. Who knows if podcasting will even be around in 10 years, but that's my plan. I will have been married for 32 years. My kids will be 30 and 28 years old. I might be a grandma by then. I don't know. I had kids when I was young. By 28, my you know, I, I had two kids by the time I was 28. It's very possible that by the time I'm 55, I will be a young grandma, hopefully a hot grandma, but a young grandma for sure. And I hope to be coaching more podcasting or maybe voiceover. I would like to be writing by then, writing books and anything, articles, things that will be helpful to others and of value to others. And if you're watching the YouTube video, there is a picture of me in my wedding dress with my husband on our wedding day in 2001. That's kind of cool if you want to check that out. We are much older now. I have actually stopped coloring my hair at this point. It is turning gray and it's kind of interesting to see it grow out. It's uh, quite the process. But anyways, I used to color my hair. Now it's going gray and that's okay because I am approaching 50. It's time. What individuals and organizations do you suggest students connect with? That's the next question. Listen, if you're a pharmacy student and you're looking to do something kind of different, the name of this course is Exploring Novel Careers in Pharmacy. Novel careers are novel for a reason. There's not a whole lot of people doing them necessarily. So if you want to do something that's different, Talk to people who do what you want to do. That is very good advice. Where do you find these people? Well, I want to recommend that you go to conferences. A lot of times people that do things that are a little different and that are getting recognition speak at conferences. I'll give you two examples. The American Pharmacists Association, which is also known as APHA, and then NAFA, the National Pharmaceutical Association. Definitely check out both of those. They may even have membership directories where you can peruse who's doing what, connect with people who are doing something that you find interesting. Just talk to people. You don't have to make a decision about what you want to do before you talk to them. Just talk to them because what they say may change your life, much like what I'm talking about today may change yours. I also recommend thinking local first. I live in Ohio. Therefore, I would recommend students connect with folks from the Ohio Pharmacists Association, not just the people that work at the association or hold a leadership position at the organization, but go to the conferences, meet the people, meet the members, talk to people, network. I would also recommend, again, thinking local, join your alumni association upon graduation. Talk to people at alumni events. If there's an alumni directory, look and see if there's anybody doing what you want to do. Even if you just want to explore it, you don't have to decide that you're going to do the thing before you just talk to someone. Also, I want to suggest that if you're interested in podcasting, connect with Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting, connect with Sean Pratt if you want to narrate nonfiction audiobooks, and connect with Debbie Irwin for medical narration. Debbie Irwin is my current medical narration coach. Moving on, which resources and activities should a student pursue if they want to go into the field? Now, again, we're talking about being a voice actor and a podcast host. I'm going to mention mostly things that have to do with either being an entrepreneur or being a voice actor and a podcast host. As far as resources, join LinkedIn. Let's connect, you know, you and me, but also connect with all those other people that I talked about, people who are doing the thing that you want to do. Connect with them on LinkedIn. Another resource is my podcast. I have a lot of interviews with people who are doing unique and interesting things. For example, there's a lot of pharmacists that work for the Public Health Service Commissioned Corps. If you have never thought about public health, you need to check those out. If you're interested in being an author, I've got a pharmacist author series. There's all kinds of great content on my podcast. As far as other resources, I would recommend you check out Metapreneurs, which you can find at metapreneurs.com. There will be a link in the show notes for that. Also, check out The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. 
I would also recommend as far as voice actor resources, go to the Global Voice Acting Academy website and check out the rate guide. There's a lot of great resources on that website, but the rate guide will tell you how much money I try to charge for my projects. In case you're wondering, a lot of people want to know, okay, Kim, you didn't make $100,000. You already said that, but how much do you make? Well, if you go to the rate guide, you can kind of guess like what I make based on what's in the rate guide. For example, for an explainer video, I would say it's about $350. If that surprises you, some of the other rates in the rate guide might as well. People always like knowing about how much people make. There's your chance. All right. Also, resources. Sean Pratt, my nonfiction audiobook narration coach, Sean Pratt, is a great resource. His website is seanprattpresents.com. seanprattpresents.com. I'll put that in the show notes. Debbie Irwin is a great resource for medical narration. If you're interested in becoming a medical narrator like me, De you're going to need a coach. Debbie Irwin is one of the best. Don Barnes is a great resource. He taught me how to use my recording software, which is called Studio One Artist. He is a mentor and a coach. He runs a great Facebook group for Studio One Artist. Also, last resource on the list here is the Vocation Conference. That's spelled just like vocation, the word, but it's V-O-cation, like voiceover. V-O stands for voiceover. And it's great for new voice actors because you can find out a lot from other people who are connected to that conference. Go to the conference, certainly learn, but there's usually a Facebook group for the conference. You can meet people, you know, follow them on social media, learn their stories, learn from them. If they have a podcast as well, check that out too. I know Jody Krangle, Jody Krangle has a podcast and I know Mike Lenz has a great podcast as well. Anyways, you can learn things from people who are doing the thing that you want to do or interested in doing. Let's move on to activities. Create a LinkedIn profile. If you don't already have one, you need to start establishing your professional identity online. Create a LinkedIn profile today. All right. Another thing that I would recommend, if you're interested in audio engineering, podcasting, voiceover work, etc., you need to try audio audio editing. Audio editing is difficult, but there are some free resources out there that you can download. For example, Audacity. Maybe you already have GarageBand on your Mac product. Just start messing around with it. See how you like it. See if you're good at it. See if you get frustrated with it. Maybe find a face Facebook group about it if you want to learn more or meet people who work with it. Ask them questions. Do they like it? Is it hard? All the things. And also some other activities I would recommend is check out Rhonda Phillips VO. She is a voiceover coach for newbies. Book a class with her or, you know, a coaching session. She used to have an online course. Can't remember the name at this exact second, but I do have a podcast interview with her. It is episode 99 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. And she has a, a beginner course for people interested in voice acting. If you're interested, take that class. That's an activity that you can do. Take that online course, that class. Also, VO Success online course with Mike Lenz is something that you could take. It's an activity you could do to work towards being a voice actor or just checking out, do I like this or not? I interviewed Mike Lenz, who I consider the original pharmacist voice actor podcast host in episode 41 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Mike has a great podcast. It is called Mike Lenz Voice, Mike Lenz Voice podcast. And he talks about it in our interview, but also he interviews a lot of other voice actors to find out their journey, how they get into voice acting, what successes and failures have they had, what challenges have they faced. I love his podcast. It's called Mike Lenz Voice Podcast. All right. Other activities you can try, improv class at Glass City Improv in Toledo, Ohio, if you're local to Toledo. But if you're in Chicago, New York, Seattle, wherever, just find an improv studio, see if they offer classes and take one. It'll be so fun. 
Also, if you want to try podcasting, you don't have to start a podcast to try podcasting. What you can do is you can just be a guest. It's called podcasting. That is an activity you can try. I highly recommend, especially if you're a student, find your Ikigai. I-K-I-G-A-I. -I -I. Google it today. Ikigai. Ikigai, however you pronounce it. Write out yours. You know, what is it that you love to do? What does the world need? What are you good at? What can you be paid for? What do you value? Write all those things out and see if you can figure out what it is that your heart wants you to do. And also, I would encourage you, last thing on the list here, write goals and believe in the power of the law of attraction. There's a movie called The Secret. And in the movie, The Secret, they talk about the power of the law of attraction. If you put out into the world something that you want to exist, sometimes the world has a way of bringing it to you. And I know that's super woo-woo of me to say. I'm not usually one of those people, but I really believe that if you put your intention out into the world and write concrete goals, sometimes the world has a way of bringing it to you. And wouldn't that be nice? So do that activity as well. As I start to close this up, um, thank you so much for listening to this. I think I actually did make this about 35 minutes long. Again, I'm Kim Newlove. I am a pharmacist, voice actor, and a podcast host. Go to thepharmacistvoice.com for the show notes for this. And also, if you want to get in touch with me, please use the contact form on my website. Again, thepharmacistvoice.com. If you want to see more videos of me being interviewed by other podcasters, you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at symbol, the pharmacist voice. And you can find all kinds of interviews like Tim Ulbrich interviewed me or your financial pharmacist podcast. Dr. Bridgette Surfity interviewed me for Minding Your Minutes YouTube podcast, and Mike Kelzer interviewed me for the Business of Pharmacy podcast. There's other ones on there. For example, I got interviewed by somebody who wanted to talk about my role as a caregiver for my son. You don't only have to podcast on pharmacy-type pharmacy podcasts. There are other things out there that might be a good match for you if you want to try that. Anyways, that's a little bit more about me and appearances that I've had this is the end of the presentation. At this time, I'm just going to talk a little bit about wrap-up messages, and I'm going to tell you two questions that students from the University of Toledo asked me that really resonated. I was really excited that they asked. All right, here we go. The number one question somebody asked that I really loved was, what's your why? That is a great question to ask because... If you don't have a strong why for what you're doing, then your passion will not take you through. You have to care very much about what you're doing. If you're exploring a novel career in pharmacy and you're doing something that nobody else has done, you have to really love it or it's going to get so hard you might just give up. And number two, the other question was, who's your white whale as a podcast guest? All right, we'll talk a little bit about my answers in just a second here. The first one, my why, I made a career transition because of life circumstances. I have a child with a disability. My husband needed me to be the primary caregiver. We decided as a couple that I would be the one that stayed home. It has not been easy. I mean, the mental uh, struggle of it has been really hard, to be honest. I love my kids. I'm happy that I could be there for them. But at the same time, my career has been very different from what I expected it to be. I didn't plan on being a stay-at-home parent and creating a part-time job. Never meant to be an entrepreneur, for sure. That was never on my radar. But my why is, it's kind of complicated. I had to stay at home, right? And it's not like I got bored and I thought voiceover would be fun. That's not at all how it went. What happened was um, my life circumstances with my child were what they were. But I wanted to find the purpose in it. The purpose in my staying home and watching him struggle was really, really hard for me. And I wanted to find some purpose in that pain of watching that, you know? So I feel like using my voice as a professional really was important to me because I raised a nonverbal child. Although my availability limits my ability to work in clinical practice, as I've already said, I still have a voice. 
And I can monetize that voice through medical narration, voiceover work, and podcasting, basically. I hope that makes sense. So basically, I was inspired by my son to use my own voice. Here I thought I didn't have any opportunities, but if I just looked at what I have and what I really appreciate is my voice. So that's that's my why. I was inspired by the power of having a voice and using it. The second question was about my white whale. The answer is Julie Morgan Stern. Julie Morgan Stern is not a pharmacist. She is a professional organizer and an author. She has written many books. I've got the names of them right in front of me here. Organizing from the Inside Out, Time Management from the Inside Out, Shed Your Stuff, Change Your Life. Those are three examples. She's written many more and narrated some of them too. But what I'm trying to get to is that I read her books because they meant something to me. And I would have her on my podcast to talk about how pharmacists could get organized and manage their time better and manage their stuff better, you know, like your physical stuff and, and get rid of bad habits and time commitments that don't serve them and unhealthy relationships that don't serve them, et cetera. I think Julie could talk to pharmacists very well about that. The way that her books are written, it addresses the behaviors behind why we do what we do. And I really think that as a pharmacist that resonated with me, and I believe that what she has to say would resonate with you as well. That is why Julie Morgenstern is my white whale. But she's famous. <laughs> she's an author and she's a professional organizer. She's a business owner. I don't know if she would want to talk to pharmacists. It wouldn't be my usual kind of interview. Therefore, I just have not pursued her. But that famous lady that has helped me so much would be my white whale for sure. Before we wrap this up, I just want to say if you want to read one of Julie Morgenstern's books, I think you should start with Organizing from the Inside Out and then go to Time Management from the Inside Out second. Those are great books. Even though the content is 15 to 20 years old, the books are very relevant to today. I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you for listening to or watching the Pharmacist's Voice podcast, episode 256. Please visit thepharmacistsvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes, you'll find a link to the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy and, oh, so much more. There are a lot of resources that I mentioned today. Glass City Improv, Debbie Irwin, Dave Jackson, Sean Pratt. LinkedIn, Metapreneurs, the Vocation Conference, so much. Lots and lots of links in the show notes today, including my social media channels. So please connect with me or follow me on social media. If you know someone who needs to hear this episode or they want to learn about my novel career in pharmacy, please share this episode with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist's Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks for joining me today. I'll talk to you next Friday.